Zoo Miami says South Florida is the Ellis Island for exotic animals. It's being invaded by reptiles. It's not uncommon to see iguanas perched in trees or scooting down sidewalks. The population is booming in the Miami area, yeah. and one reason they love the heat. But why is that? Justine LaBella with the Georgia Reptile Society joins us in studio with guests to explain. They're large That's some guests. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. And I won't lie, I'm a little bit with this, this lady right here. Yeah, first thing, yeah, introduce us to their guests first. Sure. Of all, um, this is Paula. She's our Burmese python. And this is Harold, our Argentine black and white tegu. And this is Kiwi, our green iguana. Okay. All right. Well, let's first, I guess, talk about the iguanas. And yeah. is a tegu like an iguana? Uh, they don't really like each other. Oh. Um, they tolerate each other. But are they similar animals? Uh, no, they are not. Um, this guy's from Argentina. These guys are also from South America, but they're not from the same area. Okay. Um, and these guys eat anything. Okay. Uh, these these guys are mostly vegetarian. So you guys need some space in between you. But let's let's talk about the iguana problem that we have in South Florida and the heat. What's that connection? Um, so iguanas do like a lot of heat. Uh, we bask our iguanas at 100 to 120 degrees. When they get too hot, they will regulate their temperatures. Uh, so they aren't going to just stay in the heat and cook. But uh, they do really like the heat a lot. Huh. All right. So let's see. We Take see a few me. of these guys <laughs> around, right? They're they're obviously reptiles. Yes. Uh, what do we want to do? Do we want to just avoid them? Do we want to? You want, want to mama. hang out together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I mean, how do we want to want to treat them? I mean, do um, best thing to do. Them? Best thing to do is to leave it alone, especially right. if it's just in the wild. Uh, it, iguanas, if they aren't uh, handled often, they can be kind of aggressive. So, yeah. uh, as we just saw. Yeah. Let me take it. I mean, what will, right. they, what will they do to a human? I mean, if you walk up to them, will they um, bite you? They'll, they... they'll try to run away, first of all. Okay. Um, but if you were to grab them, they would use their tail to whip. That's how they defend themselves. Okay. Um, and he wasn't being aggressive. He just. He likes her. <laughs> okay. We like he, you too. He likes her. Yeah. yeah. So, but interestingly, we've learned that in South Florida that iguanas are actually the second leading cause of power outages That's right. behind squirrels. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, That's yeah, can you talk about the other issues they can cause? Um, so, I actually asked a couple of people that I met uh, through, through my travels and uh, that live in Florida. They say that they'll get under their house and mess with some of the wiring trying to get away from the heat uh, or to have a nest. Um, so, that's really the only other issue that I've heard of yeah. with iguanas. Okay. So, All right. So let's talk about uh, Paula Dean Paula here. Dean. Very yeah. battery. How much does Paula weigh right now? She is 80 pounds. She's 10 feet long. How, and, and what would full size be? Um, uh, the biggest one I think was uh, like around the 15, 16 foot range. Uh, they've gotten bigger than that, but it's not common. Um, but they can get uh, upwards of 100 pounds or more. Wow. Um, also like the warm weather? They, they like it warm, but not that warm. Uh, so you're not going to find Burmese pythons out in like 100 degree weather in the sunlight. You're going to find them at dusk or nighttime. Are any of these animals uh, native to Florida? First no, time? none of them are. Right, so all of them were brought in and let go and now? Um, yes, uh, but green iguanas actually, some of them did come over uh, naturally sort of through the currents. They actually can swim and they've swam from other islands to Florida. So that's one exception. But the tegus and the uh, Burmese are not from Florida, there's no way they could have gotten there without some sort of human uh, yeah. intervention. Justine, real quick, what do you do if we find this near your home in Florida or anywhere? Uh, yeah, well, good. honestly, the best thing, if you see a snake and you don't know what it is, take a picture of it and try to find a reptile group like ours, Georgia Reptile Society, but there's Florida ones. Probably have an app for that. Yeah, there, there, there might be an app for that out there, I'm not aware, but if you know somebody who runs a club and you just send them a picture, they can identify it right away. Mm -hmm. And that way you're not calling an emergency service if it's not an emergency. Okay. Right. Um, but there are there are hunts going on right now to get these animals out of the wild, um, and you know you can always look into that as well. Like the iguanas, though, will these guys go? Away? I mean, they'll just kind of scurry away from you if you come up to them. Or what will um, they do? Burmese pythons are typically going just to sit there. Um, most snakes are just going to sit there. They're not going to try to escape right away. They're going to be in defensive mode first, mm -hmm. and then when you walk away, they'll leave. Um, uh, but that's the best okay. thing to do. Any snake you see, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. she has done very well on TV today. Thank yeah, you, Paula. Thank great. you, Justine, for coming in. Thank yeah. you.